Hello! In today's video, I am going to be showing you how to add recessed lighting to a finished space without attic access. So the very first step is going to be making the layout for our recessed lighting. Now, typically I like to keep mine about two feet off the wall and four feet apart, but there's no set standard. It's more so up to what you like. Now in this space, because it's just a small little demo space, I'm going to do mine with a little smaller spacing just for demonstration purposes, but I'd recommend for you to choose a spacing that is to your liking. So before we actually go ahead and drill this hole out, something I like to do is just take a small little Allen key, put it right at the center and poke it up through the drywall. Give it a little twist and we're just checking to make sure the space above our hole is clear. Uh, the biggest problem you'd run into is like a duct being up there that won't allow us to put our driver in. Now, while the style of pot lights that we're going to be installing can actually be installed directly below a joist, it is easier if we avoid that. So as you can see, I put the Allen key in so that the other end is around and that's just, I'm going to twist it just to make sure that we do have some amount of clearance as it is really going to be beneficial to us to have a little bit of wiggle room. To make the holes here, I'm going to be using a drill with a four and a quarter inch hole saw. Now, your hole size may vary depending on what brand and size of pot lights you go with. The style I'm using here is the wafer style. It's very thin. It's going to make for an easy install LED. And to determine the size of hole that you'll need, most of them will come with instructions that will give you a hole size. And in saying that, you don't need necessarily to use the exact dimension they give you, although that would work best. You can actually just take your hole saw, put it up, and we can see here that this hole saw, it will allow this inner part to fit within it, but the trim, the outside, extends past the hole saw. And that's what we're looking for here. Drill, hole saw, put it in, lock it up tight. We can twist the chuck back once more to lock it in. And we can take our pilot bit, line it up with the hole that we made with the Allen key. Now, I've seen tricks where you can start it in reverse to break that paper. To be honest, I've never really done that. I find it's just easier to give it a full send. I think the full send technique is the preferable way. But I think ultimately, if you've never done this before, take a spare sheet of drywall if you have one and practice so that you don't destroy your actual ceiling. So obviously that was fairly messy. Something that you can get to help you out with that is this. This is just a dust bowl. You simply put your hole saw through the bowl and then into your drill and then tighten it up. And here we go. Again, peel it back, put your pilot bit in. And that's simple. Alrighty, we have our holes drilled. Now we can start wiring. So there are two things we have to worry about here. One is we have to figure out how we're going to switch these lights. And the second thing is we have to figure out how we're going to connect the lights. The thing I want to focus in on first is going to be running a wire between all of the lights. That's going to be the most straightforward and it's going to be the same for all of you. So when we talk about running our wires, you can see in this room where my joists are. I have one here, here, and here. That is good, but also bad. The problem is, is that to get a wire from this pot light to this pot light, or from this one to this one, they're in the same joist space. I can literally just take my hand up there, push a wire over, grab it and pull it out. That's really easy. However, to get from this side to this side, I have three joists in my way. And there's a couple different methods from getting a wire from point A to point B, and I will demonstrate those now. The first method is what I like to call the, you better have home insurance. This is a long flexi bit. It goes into your drill. And as you can see, it is long enough to span all the way from this hole to this one. So if I had the clearance for this, I would just take my drill and I would get it at an angle and make a hole into this joist. And then I would just continue to work it 
all the way from this hole going through each joist until I come out the last one. I could then take a fish tape and get it through the holes, attach a wire and pull it all the way out. I really highly recommend you don't do this, <laughs> okay? While it's nice because you're not gonna have any damage, I would much rather have a few holes to patch than my house flood. And that's, that's the issue here. Anytime you are drilling through a joist or a stud, anything for that matter where you cannot see the other side, you are taking a risk Joists are common places for plumbing to be ran, for gas lines, electrical, all sorts of things you do not want to drill into. So while this is a method and I thought I would show it to you as this is what many electri electricians do use, I cannot advise you to do it, okay? Please guys, be safe, be smart. The next method is going to involve crown molding. Now, because you're going ahead and adding pot lights, I assume you're trying to enhance your space. A good and affordable way to do that is through crown molding. You can get some pretty cheap. However, it is tricky to install. So depending on your level of like DIY skills, this may be a feasible option for you, or it might just be too much work. I'll let you decide that, but why this is useful, and let's pretend this is crown molding here. I'm gonna take this up, put it at the angle it would be installed at, and just mark it with a pencil line. What this allows me to do is I could drill a hole right here. Okay. If I have a, a hole here, I can get a wire from this point out through this hole, run it up in this corner, going along the wall all the way until I'm at my next joist location. Could then make another hole here, pop the wire up, bring it out of the hole. And that's, again, this is gonna be a method to avoid any damage. The last and final method on how we can get a wire from pot light to pot light is going to be with damage. Now, in this scenario, I'm actually going to be removing this light. So I'm gonna have a hole here in this joy space. The important thing to note when we want to get a wire from point A to point B is we wanna be able to see each side of each joist that we're going to drill into. So with joist A, B, and C, if I'm looking at joist A here, I can see this side of it, okay? We are good, I can see it through this hole. I cannot see this side, however. That is a problem. If we're looking at joist B, I can see this side of it through our light fixture. If I were to take this box out, I can get a good look at this side and see that we are good. But once again, no good. If I were to look at this joist, once again, we can see this side through our octagon box. We are good. And this side, I can see through this hole and know that we are good. So in this situation, all I have to do is make one hole and that's gonna be in this joist space. I could just make that wherever. I'm gonna put it in line because it's gonna be easier that way. And this way, when we look at how much damage we have to actually create, it's just one hole. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the same hole saw we used for the pot lights. I'll put it up here. And now I can see each side of each joist that we have to drill through. The nice thing too, when you do it like this, you now have the disc. You just take a piece of wood, pop your disc up, and then some, some mesh tape, some compound, you've patched your hole. Before I begin drilling anything, I'm gonna go ahead and remove our existing light fixture. That was easy. And get my wires out of the way. And of course, be sure you're not working live, always test. To remove this box, this one's very straightforward as it's screwed in from the inside. And just like that, it comes out. I can almost guarantee you will not be so fortunate. It never works out that way. Something you are likely to run into is a nail on box. The reason why this is going to be more difficult is because you won't have access to where the box gets nailed in. Typically, this gets mounted up 
And so your nails are actually above where you can access in the box. So I'm gonna show you actually how to get that out now. So if you have a nail in box, you're gonna wanna get a big flathead screwdriver or something else that's gonna be similar in size. You wanna try to fit it between the gap of the box and the joist it's tied into. Your gap might not be this big. If not, that's okay. It's just wood, you can pry it in. You could take a hammer, hammer the back of the screwdriver and eventually we just wanna get it up in there and you can start to pry. Uh, it is most likely going to be nailed in, so you will be able to pry it. If it has screws, again, you can still pry it. It's just going to take a lot of force. It's going to be a bit more work, but I promise it's still possible. Also, your box may not be metal. If it's not, it's don't worry. It's going to be the same process. It's just a different material. Alrighty. So I have my box out. I have my holes drilled marked with red tape, and I have another hole with black tape so that I can see each side of the joist. I have a drill with a 7th, 8th spade bit and an extension bit. I'm going to use this to get through each of my joists. So, first things first, I know that I'm good here. I've done a visual inspection. I've put my hand up. I felt, uh, if you can't see, you can take your phone, stick it up with the light on, take a look at the side of that joist there. And since I know I'm clear, I can get my drill in. Okay. Again. Now, while I'm here, since I've taken this box out and I only have one wire, this wire in my case isn't stapled. And the switch is here. I can actually grab this wire, pull it out of my hole. And then I'm gonna be able to use this as the switch feed for my new recessed lights. You're probably not gonna be so lucky. Even if you are taking out an existing box with only one wire that you want to reuse, it's likely to be stapled. Now, because we have so many holes though, you are likely to be able to rip out those staples and relocate this wire. If not, we'll get to that. But for now, I just wanted to show you that. And then again, we have a hole there. And we can put another one. There. To loop these, I'm going to be using 14.2 Romex. If the breaker that you turned off to work on this circuit was rated at 20 amps, you would want to be using 12.2. Again though, this is all gonna vary by your local code. Here where I'm located, this is almost always done with 14.2. It's usually just a 15 amp circuit. So, of course, these two, very straightforward for me to simply run a wire between them. Now, the only reason why you might have some trouble here is if there's a cross piece, uh, and that's not an issue at all. You can easily see both sides of it. It's not often things are ran on them anyways, so you can just drill an additional hole and run your wire through that hole. And again, I like to leave maybe a foot, a foot of wire outside of each hole. Um, you don't need this much, but it's just gonna make working with it a lot easier. So you have a foot's worth, you can cross it over. And I'm gonna pull it nice and tight so as to not waste any wire. Here, I have this wire and it's long enough to reach this hole. I could keep this wire here, however, then I would have three wires in one pot light. That's not ideal. You can do it, but it's just gonna be a pain. So if you can avoid it, we wanna do that. So 
I'm going to take this wire. I'm going to run it to this pot light. And we have two here. We'll have two here. And finally, Okay, and this is what you should have. Ideally, you're gonna have two wires at each pot light with one pot light with one wire, and that'll be your last one. I just wanna take a quick second and talk about what do you do if you're in the scenario where you have a existing light and it has a box full of wires. So if you run into this, the important thing to note is that when you take out the light fixture that was here, Make a note of which leads were connecting the light fixture to the box. It is most likely a black and a white wire, and you're just going to want to take note of those two wires. The reason being is what we're going to do is you still want to try to get this box out if you can. It'll just make it a lot easier. And then you're going to have to run an additional wire from this box with all of the wires in it to one of your pot lights, and that's going to act as your switch line. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking a wire from here to here, and the wire at the octagon box is gonna tie into the same wires that were going to your light fixture. So just think of it as if the wire is your new light fixture. You're gonna tie the black to the black, the white to the white, ground it with all the other grounds, and then that way, when you think about turning the switch on, now you're, the power is going from this box, it's going to that connection, and then it's leaving, out to your pot lights. And then with this box, you just throw a blank canopy cover on it. And then that way, if you ever need to access the junction again, it's right there. To install our recessed lights, first we must strip our wire. Because the drivers that we're gonna be using, they have such a small amount of space to make the connections. We don't wanna strip the wire too much. I only like maybe three inches worth. I'm just going to take my knife, pierce the Romex, strip down, and then going to lightly, very lightly, score my Romex, and I can just pull that right off. I'm going to do the same with the other one. If you don't want to score it, you don't have to. You can just peel it up, take some side cutters, and cut it right there. And that's fine. Nothing wrong with that, but this is just cleaner. And strippers, depending on what gauge you're using, I'm using 14, so I'm gonna use the slot that says 14 solid. Again, you can go a size up, so I can do 14 and 12, and just, do both at once. Fourteen and twelve solid. Never go a size down though. We wouldn't want to use the sixteen because then we would damage the copper. So this is a really cheap pot light I have. So the driver is really cheap. Um, if you get a little higher quality one, it will come with quick connects so that these wires you don't have to use wire nuts or morettes or whatever. Um, however, almost all of them, you're going to have a little knockout that you want to knock out. It just comes right out. You can just push it in typically. And then take a plastic connector. It's a half inch. You can put it in. I'm going to line my wires up to be side by side. Keep everything nice and straight. I'm going to push it into the connector. And I just want to push enough in so that I have the jacket of my Romex just through the connector. Okay. I'm going to start separating everything. The blacks go together. The grounds can go together. And then the whites we can put together on the side there, keeping everything separate. Now again, 
much better scenario here would be to have the quick connects because we could just put all of them together. They just go in. This one did not come with any. So I'm just going to use what I have. I got some reds. I'm going to twist everything together. Make my blacks here. And I should have stripped these actually a little longer. But that's okay. Then it's going to make sure the ends are nice and flush. And I'm going to do that for everything. Get everything so the ends all line up. And then can attach it like so. Tuck everything nicely in. Close up your box. Take the lead off of the driver and the lead from the wafer. Push it in, twist, and then this just goes up there and sits nicely on top. You have these little flaps, push them up, and that's it. All right, we have our pot lights in now. Everything's wired up. And there we have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, please just comment below and I'll, I'll try my best to get back to you. And other than that, I hope you have a great day.